Hello friends, we're going to do the second demo now with PySpark on Kubernetes. The part that we're going to look at is getting it to work in client mode. Now client mode is really useful because it's really the only way to do interactive uh, work. And so if you want to deploy notebooks or you want to use the Spark shell, client mode is the deployment mechanism you're going to want. And this is new in Spark 2.4 support for Kubernetes. So um, we uh, back to our existing cluster, um, more or less the same setup. I did uh, change uh, some of the networking rules, so we'll talk about that too. Uh, so on the networking rule side, um, the problem here is my default allow internal rule wasn't allowing the Kubernetes pods to talk to my compute engine node where I was running. And because in client mode, uh, your driver program will, will run on where you're submitting from. Uh, generally, uh, that's, that was needed. And so the problem was this was really annoying to debug. It took me a long time. It turned out that uh, the error message that you'll get if you have something like this come up, um, just for those of you following along at home, uh, is going to be something like cannot receive any reply from in 120 seconds. Um, and at first, I thought it was that uh, I didn't have my ingress configured correctly for the Kubernetes thing, and I spent a lot of time looking at that. But it turned out it was the other ingress setting that was misconfigured. Um, no guarantee what, what you'll have. Uh, so that being said, let's look at the client mode deployment documentation. So client mode networking uh, is a little bit different. So the Spark executors must be able to connect to the Spark driver over a hostname and port that is routable from the Spark executors. Notably, your hostname can actually be an IP address. It's fine if you don't have DNS set up. Don't, don't worry about it. Um, and exactly how you configure this is going to change based on your setup. Uh, you could run your driver inside of a Kubernetes pod using a headless service. Um, at that point, though, it's kind of frustrating because you'll, you'll have to make or I think it's kind of frustrating because the reason that I use client mode is often quick interactive debugging uh, and other things like that. And in that case, um, spinning up a, a driver pod and then connecting into my driver pod and getting Jupyter started um, or setting up that is, is a non-trivial amount of work. Um, doing this here is, is relatively simple. Um, I've got my master, I've got my deploy mode is set to client. This is the IP address of my compute engine node. This is a port we're going to run the driver on. Um, this is the image. We're going to use two instances. And this is my block manager. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and we're going to launch this. This will give us a Spark shell. Um, and it'll be easy-ish to use. Um, now, since I'm using this with Google Cloud Storage, one of the things that I did have to do uh, is, um, where is it? Uh, actually, it's in my O'Reilly blog post. So um, I I have my, my Docker file, which removes this old version of Guava, downloads a new one, and then downloads the storage connector. And uh, if you're doing this at home, you're going to want to just go, and let's, let's actually show you what you're going to want to do. You're going to want to do an rm dot slash jar slash Guava. dash star, and then you're going to want to go into jars, and you're going to want to download um, this. You're just going to end the GCS connector. And you can just do those both with wget in your in your Spark installation. Um, normally, you would use the dash dash packages command to install this. But since there's a version conflict with Guava, it's, it's just easier to do it this way. Uh, so let's go ahead and do our word count uh, sc.rdd. It's going to be. Um, Diversity data, Jupyter underscore new dot sh. Um, oh, sorry, sc that text file gives me back an RDD. It's it's been a lot of travel. So res one, and then we go ahead and we do our normal flat map uh, for tokenization. Uh, so we're gonna just do underscore dot split on spaces, and we're gonna go ahead and do map. Um, and, and I know using underscore is, is maybe not the easiest to understand. It is, it is pretty standard in Spark, though. Um, but just underscore binds to that 
parameter in the function. So in this case, there's one underscore, so it's the first parameter. Same thing here. Here there's two underscores, so this is the first parameter, and this is the second parameter. Um, and notably, there is also this dot underscore one for indexing into tuples. I wish we had different syntax, um, and it's completely unrelated. So let's go ahead and run this. Uh, oh, input path does not exist. Oh, I misspelled Jupiter. And we've got our words. It's kind of nice. Um, we can see they're all here. We can validate that we actually are talking to our Kubernetes workers. Um, it's like Holden-Magic here. This is where the Spark Web UI is running. And if we go look at our executors, let's take a second, uh, we can see that there's, there's these two executors here. Um, so that's pretty much it. Uh, uh, the next example, if I have time, we'll launch a Jupyter Notebook as well. See you in the next one.